in order to answer to the inquiry made by Vidura. Why is it that Daksha and Shiva became enemical to each other as a result of which Sati had to burn herself? So different reasons that uh, took place because of the enmity between Lord Shiva and uh, Daksha was discussed in the second chapter. So everything we discussed in the previous class. And today we are going to discuss about what uh, what were the subsequent reasons because of which Mother Sati committed or burnt herself? So that is the main theme for today's chapter. So in the third chapter, Mother Sati, desiring to see the sacrifice performed by her father Daksha, he is forbidden by Lord Shiva, who cites words concerning proper conduct. So basically, so today we are going to understand that in the previous sacrifice when Daksha was performing, as soon as he entered in, everyone got up except Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. So since Lord Brahma is his own father, Daksha did not mind. And uh, he was waiting that Lord Shiva will get up and offer obeisances. But Lord Shiva did not do it. Daksha became very much angry and cursed Lord Shiva and left the assembly. Then Lord Shiva's uh, servant, Nandi, we cursed Daksha as well as the followers of Daksha. And then the leader of all the Brahmanas, Bruhu, cursed the followers of Lord Shiva. So at the end, Lord Shiva feeling uh, that again Nandi is going to offend Vaishnava, was going to criticize Lord Vishnu and his devotees. So Lord Shiva immediately left from that assembly along with his followers. Then all, all the great Brahmanas headed by Bruhu, etc., they completed the sacrifice. So that was the completion. So now what happened afterwards? That is the subject matter of this chapter. So this chapter contains small chapter 25 verses. So in the first four verses, we see that Daksha starts another sacrifice without sending any invitation to Lord Shiva. He sends invitation to everyone else except Lord Shiva. So as everyone is going to attend that sacrifice, Sati expresses her desire to Lord Shiva that let us go to our father's sacrifice. Then Lord Shiva gives so many reasons why they should not go. But yeah, even in spite of hearing all those reasons, in the next chapter we will see that Sati will still go. And she was not received properly by her father. So she felt uh, neglected. She felt disrespected. Then invoking fire, she burns herself. So that was the reason for her burning herself. So in that way. So in the first four verses, uh, the performance of second sacrifice by Daksha is indicated. Maitreya Uvacha Sada Vidvishyatorevam Kalo Vaidriya Manayo Jamatu Svasurasyapi Sumahan Atichakrame Someone read the translation. Maitreya continued, in this manner, the tension between the father-in-law and son-in-law, Daksha and Lord Shiva, continued for a considerably long time. Sada vidvishator evam kalo vai driya manayo. So, kala ati chakrame. So basically, lot of time has passed as Son-in-law and father-in-law were constantly continued their enmity, enmity with each other. With Vishator Driya Mana. Driya means do, to hold on to. So father-in-law was holding on to son-in-law that he disrespected me. And son-in-law was holding on to father-in-law that he disrespected me. He says me like that. That ill feelings between Lord Shiva in the sense that enmity. Of course, Lord Shiva did not have any envious feelings toward Daksha, but from Daksha's point of view, it is like that. So the, the unspoken disturbance was continued for a long time between both Daksha and uh, Lord Shiva. They did not beg pardon, pardon from each other. So for a long time, they continued like that. So Prabhupada writes in the purport that generally for any sacrifice, along with Lord Vishnu, all the devatas are supposed to be invited. 
So here we are going to see that Daksha is not going to invite Lord Shiva. So without inviting all the devatas, the sacrifice will not be completed properly. That is what will happen at the end of the sacrifice. It will not be completed properly because of his uh, mean mentality. So then, why Daksha did not invite uh, Lord Shiva? That is one reason is because of enmity towards Lord Shiva, etc., etc. But other reasons, other details are mentioned here. Yeda Abhishikto Dakshastu Brahma na Parameshtina Prajapati nam Sarvesham Adipate Smayobavat. When Lord Brahma appointed the Daksha, the chief of all the Prajapatis, the progenitor of population, Daksha became very much popular. Mm, this is the main reason. Daksha was appointed by Lord Brahma as the chief of all Prajapatis. Yada Abhishikto Dakshastu Brahmana Parameshtina. Parameshti, Lord Brahma is also called Parameshti, the supreme most personality in the entire universe. Prajapati nam Sarvesham Adipati. So, Daksha was made head of all Prajapatis by Lord Brahma. Now he is the leader of all Prajapatis, he is the leader of all the Rishis. All the Prajapatis upon whose names we all have Gotras. So that one created Smayo Abhavat. Smayo means pride. That position given by Lord Brahma unto Daksha created pride in his heart. That pride is the main reason for not inviting Lord Shiva. So that is the problem. Just because he was made as the leader of the Prajapatis, he thought that he is the leader of Lord Shiva also. But the four Kumaras, Lord Shiva and Narada Muni are much superior to the Prajapatis. They are in the superior position than the other sons of Brahma. Brahma had many sons. All the other sons are generally known as Prajapatis. Except Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras and Narada Muni. Narada Muni did not marry. Four Kumaras did not marry. And Lord Shiva, though he married, Lord Brahma only tells, please don't be good children. So these five, five and one, six are not under the category of Prajapatis. They are like superiors entirely. So, Daksha thought that I am superior to everyone. So, that is the problem with him. That is the problem with any position. That, that's what Prabhupada writes in the uh, purport. When a man becomes too proud of his material possessions, he can perform any disastrous act. And therefore, Daksha acted out of false prestige that is described in this chapter. So that was the whole reason. This is the main reason for the enmity between Daksha and Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva never felt enmity towards Daksha. We will understand in this later part of the chapter, we will understand what is the reason why the why Lord Shiva behaved the way he behaved. But Daksha is behaving like this because of this. He is thinking that he is superior to everyone among all the sons of Lord Brahma. But which is not the four Kumaras, Narada Muni, and Lord Shiva certainly much, 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 much superior to Daksha that he failed to understand. Yes, Mataji. Yes, generally, if, if somebody doesn't remember their Gautrams, they say so give the name Krishna. Our chief of us is from the body. But in general, outside when they perform rituals, they say Kashyapa. And we know who, how Kashyapa and who. That is the reason. Kashyapa actually in one sense, these are all sons who are born to Brahma during Sayamu Manandra. But there was a huge pralaya during Tikshya Manandra. After that pralaya, mostly all the children, all the living entities were reborn through Kashyapa. Not only human beings, the Asuras, Rakshasas, Kinnaras, Kimpurusha, Siddha, Chadara, Vidyadaras, the human beings, animals, birds, everyone were born through Kashyapa. This is the main topic of sixth canto. Sixth canto, everything will be explained. How everyone is born through Kashyapa. Again, there is a connection to Daksha again there also. Daksha's daughters were married to Kashyapa, 17 daughters. Those 17 daughters, the 17 variety of living entities were born. So, uh, so that's why Kashyapa, both can be taken for anyone. Ours is Kashyapa. Mm. Our family. Mm. 
There is only one Kashipa, bro. <laughs> there is only one Kashipa. We don't have to manufacture another one. Because I, I have heard somebody has Bhagavad Gita also. Ah, yes, yes. Yes. All are different sons of Brahma. We have na Pulaha, Pulasya, Karatu, Vasista. Everyone have all these Gotras. People different people have different uh, Prajapatis at their Gotra. The Gotra is basically from whom their lineage is originated. Simple. He is the Prajapati, his children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, like that. The descendants are coming down. That is our source. So, how do we actually know how the Gotra is ours? Simple. Parents will tell us. Your grandchildren may not know, but you people should know. So it has no connection with the nakshatra that we have. I know nothing. Gotra is that is eternally it is there. That will continue on. Gotra should be known. Our uh, grandparents' name should be known. Great grandparents also should be known. That I have seven. But Gotra name on the question. Seven um, no. You check with your uh, relatives. Someone must be knowing. Some elderly people must be knowing. But now your Gotra will be the Gotra of your husbands. After marriage, the Math Mataji is supposed to be part of the husband's family. Though, from the lineage point of view, though you are coming from your father's lineage, but after the marriage, things will change. Gotra changes over. Changes in the sea. Now, after the marriage, the Mataji belongs to the yes. in-laws home. Surname changes. Uh, okay, forget about Mataji. What about their children? Who's go through this children should have? Yeah. Ah. For husband yeah. also, it's like the now after the marriage, responsibility lies with the hands of husband. So everything connected to husband becomes wives. That's why she is called as uh, Lord Shiva. The, we are going to discuss that. Uh, she is Lord Shiva is called as Ardhanarishwara. Whatever belongs to husband, that half of that belongs to wife. So not only that, everything. Karma also will be shared by both husband and wife together. So we are kind of benefited, like you know. <laughs> so, that so the wealth of Daksha was a cause of his offense in ruling and became a further cause of offense. That is made clear by saying that he became proud. So the position that was given to Daksha the main source of his pride and offensive mentality, which will lead to many more offenses. In the future, he will curse Narada Muni. Six seconds to the topic will come. So it's like that. Now he's already offended Lord Shiva. So that way. So with that pride, what did he do? Ishtvasavaja Peyena. Brahmistan Abibuyacha Bruhatpati Savam Nama Samare Be Kratutamam Daksha began a sacrifice named Vajapeya. He became excessively confident of his support by Lord Brahma. He then performed another great sacrifice named Brihaspati Seva. Yeah. So Daksha performing a sacrifice named Vajapeya. Then began the best of sacrifices called Brahaspati Sava, surpassing the followers of Shiva. So he already performed Vajapaya sacrifice. Afterward, there is another sacrifice called Brahaspati Sava. There is a scriptural mandate that out of pride, surpassing the followers of Lord Shiva, Daksha performed the Brahaspati Sava. Why? Shruti says, Vajapaya Neshtva. Bruhaspati Savena Yajeta. After performing the Vajapaya sacrifice, one should also perform Bruhaspati Sava sacrifice. It's a scriptural mandate. So he is doing it. But the problem is that he wanted to override the followers of Lord Shiva. Ignoring the followers of Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva himself, he wanted to do everything. Which is not, which is a flaw in the scriptural mandate. So generally, Lord Shiva and his followers are supposed to be invited for the sacrifice. So without inviting any one of them, he wanted to complete all the sacrifices. So, though he is following scriptures, but at the same time he is also neglecting scriptures. So, that is the what he is thinking. So, he is thinking that what is, the, what is the use of following these people? I will complete my sacrifice without calling them. So, that is how he is going in one sense again in the scriptures. So, Prabhupada writes, 
so this is actually a big offense lord krishna says that um, more than worshiping me the worship of my devotee is superior mad bhakta puja vedikar so my devotee should never be disrespected daksha is doing that offense here by not inviting lord shiva so that is mentioned uh, of course but in the previously it said that no so surpassing the faults of lord shiva means without inviting the faults of lord shiva without allowing them to be part of that sacrifice he is he want to do it himself tasmin brahmarshayo sarve devarshi pitru devata asankruta swastenas tat pratn tat patnascha sa bhatru bhatruka ornaments along with their husbands. so this is one important theme in this chapter so whenever there is a family function the mataji and prabhu go together wife and husbands especially the mataji are decorated very nicely and they go that is what they like to do they were worshiped and again worshiped along with their wives so the prabhupada writes many of the purports about the say this, this particular theme in any auspicious ceremony such as a marriage ceremony sacrificial ceremony or puja ceremony it is auspicious for the married women to decorate themselves very nicely with ornaments fine clothing and cosmetics these are auspicious signs many heavenly women assembled with their husbands the devarshis demigods and rajarshis in that great sacrifice named vaspati sava it is specifically mentioned in this verse that they approached with their husbands for when a woman for when a woman is decorated nicely husband become more cheerful the nice decorations ornaments and dress of the wives of the devatas and sages and the cheerfulness of the devatas and sages themselves were all auspicious signs for the ceremony so this can be seen in marriage ceremonies all come with uh, nice garments and ornaments so they express their joy with everyone so in that way so then they are all going along with their husbands so here sati witnessing them goes into dissatisfaction tat upashrutya navasi kecharanam prajalpatam sati dakshayani devi pitru yagna mahostava vrajanti vrajanti hi sarvato digriya upadeva varasriya vimana vimanayana sapreshta ఔస్తుఖ్యాభ్యభాసతా the great sacrifice being performed by her father and she saw that from all directions the beautiful wives of the heavenly dancers their eyes very beautifully glittering they near her residence and they going to the sacrifice dressed in fine clothing and ornamented with earrings and necklaces with lockets she approached her husband the master of the lutas in great anxiety and spoke as follows yeah this is the problem <laughs> while the devatas were going on they were speaking about yeah we are going to the laksha sacrifice and let us go fast let us go this thing so a lot of people have come visited etc etc so they are talking about so many things about the great lita about sacrifice and they are very nicely decorated and they are going along with their husbands by the way they are passing through the kailash so proper rights it seems that uh, lord shiva abode is not on our earth somewhere else so so as they were going with sati heard all of them so then immediately she approaches lord shiva and expresses her desire to go to the same sacrifice so sati will speak from verse number 8 all the way up to 14 the remaining verses in this section 
were all spoken by Sati. She gives various reasons why we should go to the sacrifice. Then the remaining chapter, Lord Shiva gives various reasons that why they should not go to the sacrifice. So here Prabhupada, again the same point, uh, mentioned that each woman was accompanied by her husband. Thus they looked so beautiful that Sati was impelled to dress similarly and go to the sacrifice with her husband. That is the natural inclination of a woman. So, Hearing from the mouth of the gossiping Kecharas about the great sacrifice being held by her father and seeing the wives of the Upadevas going, she spoke to her husband. So not only the main devatas, even the Upadevas, Gandharvas, Kinnaras, Sapsaras, they are all going to the sacrifice of Daksha. So where was it happening? In the greater Himalayas. Above Bharat Varsha. No, no. Just above Bharat Varsha. In Yamudipa only, there are greater Himalayas. They are only the sacrifice that means. Kailash also is over there. Ah, Kailash also is in the greater Himalayas. Same place. So now Sati is coming to Lord Shiva and going to make so many uh, reasons and trying to convince Lord Shiva so that they both of them can go to the father's home. Prajapate ste, Prajapate ste, Swasurasya Sampratam, Niriya Pito Yajna Mahosa Vakila, Vayam Chatatra Pisharama Vamate, Devotees on online also can read the translation. Next on next translation words you can read. So Tasati is saying that a great sacrifice has been undertaken by your father-in-law Daksha. So here Daksha did not send an invitation to Sati, his own daughter. Okay, he has ill feelings towards Lord Shiva, but he could have sent to his own daughter, but did not do. She came to know about the sacrifice by the traveling the devatas. So they were, while they were traveling, they were talking about the Regna and she heard about it. Now only she came to know. She is coming to know about it from third person. And in spite of that, she goes to her husband very nicely. She very nicely, she pleads to her husband saying that my great sacrifice has been undertaken by your father-in-law, Daksha. Since the Devatas are going there, let us also go there. My noble Lord, this is my request. So, Sati very respectfully, very humbly and uh, requesting Lord Shiva so that both of us can go. If the famous Devatas are going, then we should also go there. Oh, noble Lord, this is my simple request. I like that last sentence. If you so desire. Exactly, I was going to point it. But Parnashwar Prabhu is going to me, so I'm right. She said that if you desire, you may also. And that's mm. the how the first sentence comes. <laughs> <laughs> Next chapter, you see, hey, what will happen? See, see the initial stage. She tried her best. Okay. Father ka ghar hai prabhu. Okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> so, Sati knew of the tension between her father and her husband. Prabhupada writes. But still she expressed to her husband, Lord Shiva, that since such sacrifices were going on at her father's home and so many devatas were going, she also desired to go. But she could not express her willingness directly. And so she told her husband that if he desired to go, then she could also accompany him. In other words, she submitted her desire very politely to her husband. As if okay. she does not have any desire to go. So that was, see, that is underlined. You are, you are reading in between lines. She is <laughs> completely submissive and she is asking if you so desire. It's always the first session for her. <laughs> so, 
So it started with if you saw desire. So we'll see where it goes. Tasmin baginyo mama barth biswa kair. Druvam gamishanti suru didrikshwa ta didrikshava. Aham chatasmin bavata bikama ye. Saho panitam paribaraham artitum. I Some... think that. Hare Krishna. Ah, please, please go ahead. I think that all my sisters must have gone to this great sacrificial ceremony with their husbands just to see their relatives. I also desire to decorate myself with the ornaments given to me by my father and go there with you to participate in that assembly. Yeah, here also Artitam is used. I am requesting something like that. My sisters, along with their husbands, Tasmin Baginyo, Mama Bartabir Swakir, in that sacrifice, all my sisters will come. Because Daksha had 16 daughters. So other 15 sisters will come along with their husbands. Nicely decorated. She says that. My sisters along with their husbands will certainly go to the sacrifice. Desiring to see my friends along with you. I also desire to accept gifts offered by my parents. So, dire dire, age badre. See, second reason is that first reason was that if you so desire, we'll go. Second is that my sisters will come along with their husband, so I also would like to go along with my husband. The next is that my parents will give them so many gifts. He will give also me so many gifts. I will also want to accept gifts. So again, same. Prabhupada writes very nicely. It is a woman's nature to want to decorate herself with ornaments and nice dresses and accompany her husband to social functions meet friends and relatives, and enjoy life in that way. The propensity is not unusual, for women is the basic principle of material enjoyment. Uh, therefore, in Sanskrit, the word for women is three, which means one who expands the field of material enjoyment. So, in that way. But on the other hand, Lord Shiva, however, is different. Therefore, his name is Shiva. He is not at all attracted by material enjoyment. Although his wife Sati was the daughter of a very great leader and was given to him by the request of Brahma. Lord Shiva was reluctant, but Sati as a woman, the daughter of a king, wanted enjoyment. She wanted to go, she wanted to, go to her father's house just as her other sisters might have gone and meet them and enjoy social life. Here she specifically indicated that she would decorate herself with the ornaments given by her father. She did not say that she would decorate herself with the ornaments given by her husband because her husband was careless about all such matters. He did not know how to decorate his wife and take part in social life because he was always in ecstasy with thoughts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. According to Vedic system, a daughter is given a sufficient dowry at the time of marriage. And therefore, Sati was also given a dowry by her father. And ornaments were included. It is also the custom that the husband give, give some ornaments. But here it is particularly mentioned that her husband, being materially almost nothing, could not do so. Therefore, she wanted to decorate herself with the ornaments given by her father. It was fortunate for Sati that Lord Shiva did not take the ornaments from his wife and spend them for ganja because those who are in those who imitate lord shiva in smoking ganja exploit everything for household from household affairs they take all of their wife's property and spend on smoking intoxication and similar other activities so probably trying to see in the contemporary issues yeah. okay. those days of course even today also things are happening like that what is that? Ah, three means one who expands. Ah, Atma Jaya, Sutagara, Pashu, Dravina Bandushu, Pratya Chai, Vigla Nityam, Viruda Mahan, Mamutam Jaya. This only? This three only. No, three only. Three means one who expands. Of course, Prabhupada writes the same thing again. Yoshita also comes, another word. 
ఫుల్ బాడీ then atma jaya sutta children agara home in order to maintain all these people dravina money is required and pashu vehicles are required to earn money one need to go travel from a place to place vehicles are required so one can't stay in one's own family bandushu you man is a social human being social being so, so one need to associate with friends and relatives pa bandushu and rajya Raja is basically uh, one's uh, uh, that for the for the king kingdom for anyone it is like one's uh, society. not society not property Raja is basically one's occupation for a Kshetriya it is, is kingly occupation for anyone whatever their livelihood occupation so that is Raja because there Sukhadeva Goswami is speaking to Parashit Maharaj about Parashit Maharaj it is Raja for a king it is Raja for any person whatever occupation they do so that is required so they are all come with wife when wife is there everything will come <laughs> it's not about fortunate or unfortunate but see the it it, it won't stop with wife it won't stop with wife wife comes suddenly children will come suddenly house is required with obvious natural this nowadays after marriage everyone wants to have a new home they take loan or whatever it is the eventually wife and husband both of need both of them need to work in order to pay their emis and eventually like that things will go on so it's like that but is now cost emails for affecting their lives affecting this in what sense spiritual way ah. so like the krishna says in the ninth chapter of the gita that even the oration the tashudra can perfect it and as you are saying that the female now this is not offensive to anybody else or females also but we are i mean the females are actually responsible for a male to not perfect his life in one sense because he gets involved in so no no they are never fast ha ah, hare krishna here there is a question so mata ji is asking that it apparently seems that by a mata ji coming into the life of a prabhu ji as a wife so it seems that she is causing uh, the stoppage of the spiritual progress so she is she is putting him in bondage so then how will she be perfecting her life and how will he be perfecting his life so any thoughts about it is it really mata ji coming to the life of a prabhu ji matlab basically oh, when their marriage is the cause of bondage if yes how they will come out if not how they will uh, perfect their life any thoughts prabhu ji i don't know i would also say ke hand in hand both can also grow spiritually to a great extent can both can be a great help to each other and both can you know really grow spiritually it can okay. be two thank you thank you thank you yeah others yes mata ji vrinda mata ji yes so even i have this i am of the same opinion that if both have decided to walk on the same path and they want to grow spiritually they can help each other and definitely they can uh, both uh, grow uh, spiritually okay that is fine both can help each other that is like a very abstract answer so can you get into details like here the question is 
apparently based on this parapa it seems that the women uh, coming into the life of a man expanding the field of enjoyment which will cause bondage is it really so if that is so how can both of them can be delivered from this material bondage okay here an answer is not always okay not always if it is so if it is so then how if it is not so why so or how if the interests cross uh -huh. then there could be problems okay but uh, generally one i mean either spouse can kind of uh, Help the other person. Okay, see, you are addressing the practical issue. We are not stopping with practical issues. We are going to the ultimate issue, deliverance. The practical issues can be there. Conflict of interest, conflict no, of seen, opinions, causes. I am saying the interest. Somebody who is spiritually bent. Ah. One of them. The other is not. Mm. There is purely materially bent. Mm. So then there can be an issue there. Ah. But slowly and steadily, I think somewhere. either of them will learn the other trait and move, move in one direction is yes. mm -hmm. if they move in right direction that is good yes. otherwise <laughs> it is not good for both so my question is not yet understood but what i'm saying is that in one sense we even become see cause okay let's say in some families okay the man can get carried away but female herself on her own how does she perfect her life okay that's the question Okay, without the help of irrespective of married, unmarried, whosoever. And now you don't get yeah. it out, come out of Vedic culture. Yeah, so so then keep it in Vedic culture, uh, so in it, the context of Vedic so culture. Vedic Though what you are saying is becoming prevalent in the modern day context, but still, first let us talk about Vedic culture, then come into modern day context. Yes, uh -huh. I was going to say from Vedic culture uh, point of view only. Mm -hmm. Since it is mentioned here that she can become a cause of bondage, mm. and here we are talking about deliverance of the female herself. Mm. Okay. How do we go about? So, please, any thoughts? The purport indicates that woman is the cause of bondage of man, but if that is the case, how she can be delivered? If she is the cause of somebody else's bondage, how she can deliver herself? By following her husband. she herself putting him in bondage oh, so always <laughs> following brahmachari grihastha varnashram and sanyasa you do for the rest just following is enough yeah so the vedic rituals what is it the rituals vedic rituals want to go to swarga or what yam imam pushpitam vacha pravadanti avipachita vedava dardha parata nani dasthiti vardhana कामात्मा सर्ग पर क्रिया विशेष बहुल भोगेश्वर प्रदत्ताश्रमेंटिकली even after he after speaking me under times it will people will not get if you don't speak and you assume it will not happen okay now tell me by following varnashram duties what is the expected results what is the obvious result of following varnashram duties as a grossa many times we discussed ah sarga is that deliverance Either the relevance again, I have to come back. The time book to a circle of commissalam, she never put me. But the local vision the age net to a a kaja or skiba papas on a bag. Papa Shuru Karna Badegopus a ABCD. Harakishna online devotees, please enlighten us. But so that is all there. From our side, what we are supposed to do? Is that your question? Yeah. Ah. Definitely. Mercy is anyway required. That is a, that we that is required. But from our side, how can we do? Yeah, dear God, thank you, sir. Is go follow the husband go? No, why not? Yeah, don't. I'm not saying. I'm not saying husband will follow. So no, you will. No, no. I'm saying me following husband. I'm saying the same thing. No, I agree. But then, if your husband is not following, and you you have that 
you know, innate uh, need to do it, then you will follow a spiritual master and find a spiritual master for yourself and then probably that has been also good for <clears throat> No online answers. Okay, no problem. See, my understanding is, I mean, it's, I don't have much experience in practical way of dealing things, but at least from scriptural point of view, my simple understanding is that here all of us are, not all of us, few of us are initiated, few of us are not initiated. What is the meaning of initiation? Huh? Okay, that is our details, but essence, what is the essential principle of initiation? Beginning of something. Beginning of spiritual. Beginning of something. Okay, anyone? What is the meaning of initiation? Uh, from online. Spiritual master accept the responsibility of a disciple. That is initiation. We are formally connected to the parampara. It is the spiritual master who is coming in the parampara will take the responsibility of the disciple to make sure that the disciple is rightly instructed so that the disciple can endeavor to go back home back to God. Spiritual master facilitates. Still, it depends on our endeavor. Okay, my initiation, okay, it is my spiritual master's responsibility that he will take me to back to God. That will not work. He will facilitate. By doing what we can go back to God. But if you don't follow, spiritual master will be in difficulty. So that is initiation from the spiritual context for a disciple to the spiritual master. And initiation in relation to household order is marriage. In the marriage, in the presence of Agni, in the presence of 3.3 crore devatas, the husband takes a vow that I will take your responsibility and also the responsibility of your children. Children that will be born through you. This is a vow taken by the husband in the Vivaha Samskara. It is the responsibility of the husband to take care of the wife's spiritual progress, children's spiritual progress. Otherwise, the husband will be at fault of not fulfilling one's own promise. That's why Lord Dushyap Dev become, he is very angry in the fifth canto. You remember that verse? So, Samupeta Mrutyam, if one is not able to deliver one's dependent, dependent from the cycle of birth and death, one should not become father, mother, guru, the worshipful deity, the friend, the well-wisher, and also husband, father, mother. Pitana Sasya, Janana Sasya, I don't remember exactly the words, but all these different roles we play in this world, father, mother, then Guru, then uh, friend, uh, the deity, worshipful deity, devatas, whatever it is, and finally the husband. So all these responsibilities one need to follow. So that is it. As a mother, it's my duty to uh help my child progress spiritually. It is a combined duty of the father and mother. Suppose if the child is not accepted or if, or whatever circumstance is not happening, that means I'm If you have done your duty properly, you are not at fault. Taking or not taking up to them. Spiritual master provides all the necessary facilities and also gives necessary instructions. Following or not following is up to the disciple. Same way. What if the husband don't know the modern day predicament, unfortunate situation of the modern day, but we are expected to know because we have never been to Gurukul. We have been to convent school. 
कॉन्वेंट स्कूल हमारा इंडियन का स्कूल नहीं वो ब्रिटिश का स्कूल है सो हमको ब्रिटिश का संस्कार ही मिलेगा वो फर्गेट ब्रिटिश स्कूल में बर्थ के बारे में बताया नहीं ना यही पहला जन्म यही लास्ट जन्म मीट स्लिप एंड बी मेरी स्कूल सो वाई डू वन वरी अबाउट कर्मा दिस एंड दैट एक्सेट्रा जस्ट एंजॉय एर्न मनी लिव लाइफ किंग साइज दट इज वाट वी लर्न इन द स्कूल दट इज द कल्चर इज बींग टाट इन द स्कूल So, see, teachers are taking money. Students are paying money. So I am paying money. You are giving me education, and I am paying money and learning this education to earn more money. So everyone want to become big, big uh, CEO, MDs to earn more, more, more money. Who wants to do selfless service? The teachers first. The teach the teacher himself is not selfless. How can a student will become selfless? The parents are not selfless. How can the children become selfless? The parents are telling the children that study well. I am sending you to brilliant grammar school in Andhra Pradesh. Famous school is there, starting from fifth class, IIT Foundation. So, yeah, fifth class onwards, IIT Foundation. After intermediate plus one plus two, they need to get into IIT. After B Tech, they need to get into I Twenty University in US. That's all. Then in two years, get green card, get married to a beautiful looking girl. Little nine years, and we suffer in India, and you suffer in America. Secular ancestry. Huh? <laughs> get married. Secular ancestry. I'm saying there. Okay. उधर जाएगा तो मैं जात तो मिलेगा इसमें के. इतने पढ़ाई कर रहे तो जात मिलेगा. So that is the samskaras we are giving to our children, we are giving to our students. So what can we can expect? And in that context, the question what you are asking. I have no scriptural basis. And what Mata Ji can do? I have Lord Krishna says, "Sriyo Vaishna Tata Shudra." That Sriyo Vaishna Tata Shudra, na the scriptures never talk about women separately. They always talk about men, because just like a disciple depends upon guru completely, the woman depends upon husband completely. So what her husband does, half of it comes to wife. So there is no independent existence for woman. Only once in a while the woman description comes. Those women who are not protected, who do not have shelter, only in that case their name is taken separately. Otherwise, women is never introduced separately without her husband. So when it is said that Sri Yogi Shastra Tata Shudra or Mahabharat is meant for uh, uh, Dija Bandhu Shudra and Sri uh, women, that is only meant for those women who don't have any protector. Apparently. So even they also, by taking shelter of bhakti, can be liberated, because when they have protection, it is the responsibility of husbands to make sure that wife is getting perfection. So even in spite of no, of course, the husband is guru for wife in one sense. That is the vow at the time of marriage taken by the wife. If even the husband is not there, protector is not there, chill. She can take the service, devotional service, and can perfect her life. That is scriptural understanding. Quality individual endeavor of your of the soul. That's right. That as a as a woman, I have to depend on my husband. That's fine. But individual endeavor under the guidance of guru. For a disciple, guru's guidance. For a wife, husband's guidance. That is Vedic custom. Because husband goes to guru, get the instruction, comes home, implement the instruction in the home. That's why we don't see any mother is going to guru school and learning under guru, etc. In the Vedic culture, boy goes to Gurukul, studies everything under Guru, and comes home, implements everything, and family members follow it properly. So that was Vedic custom. So it is like that. But even in that era, demons were knowing mm. everything what was taught in Guru. Like the examples are given now that. Uh, These all the historic figures. They knew how to write horses. They knew they knew archery also. In although they didn't go to the, the they study at home. The grandparents will teach them. So within the limits, within the Antapura presence, they do everything. They learn basic things. 
that they never bored from doing all these things but only thing that gurukul culture it is not in home it is out of home so that is only for boys the girls studied at home only so whatever basic according to their inclination they were taught some of them learned to archery also that is according to their inclination no one forced upon them that you should learn archery and all if they are interested basic things may not be to the extent that they can fight but basic for self defense can be taught so it's like that ट्रांसलेटर and he had challenged her that if you were krishna is so much let me get a donor let me get operated <laughs> that was the challenge and she told always tell me he doesn't believe what this is your mm. i think maybe because she and it happened and she was saying i think uh, something happened but finally though it, it, the, the transplant failed but he was helmet bent on having this transplant and his daughter is a doctor brother is a doctor everything like he must have Mm-hmm. She had put so much and then and all, and and she could go and tell in his ears in the ICU last because the hope has gone. Hari Krishna, just stand Hari Krishna. So in that context, I am saying if the woman is so strong in her spirituality, and that man was very well, last he could hear Hari Krishna, na, because he is eyelids move little in the ICU. Doctors didn't tell them to move it. She went and did that. I am here. I am in the ICU with you. you just stand Hari Krishna. So in that context, I am asking because if the woman so sometimes it happens that the man so the of course, bhakti is beyond all the rules and regulation. Bhakti is beyond three modes. The bhakti will have its own potency. That is there. Wife can inspire husband, husband can inspire wife, children can inspire parents, parents can inspire children. That is always there. But we are we are we are trying to these are all exceptions. But we are generally seeing the principle. So nowadays things are entirely different. So I mean, very cultural things little they are like very uh, I would say. simple they are very simple straight forward but nowadays things are uh, everything uh, topsy turvy so speaking those principles now also sometimes seems to be violence how can you say that there are some mataji are very angry now if, if i speak like this so how can you say that i mean no, you think we are less something like that there is a question comes like that you know some mataji is also question that how can propad write that women are less intelligent in the schools and colleges all the women are toppers the girls are only doing well <laughs> but what scriptures are t- talking uh, what our uh, uh, medium of conveying is entirely both are nothing to do with each other the scriptures are talking from the point of view of understanding the vedas studying vedas is a rigorous training required one need to learn sanskrit one need to go through and, uh, and studying the grammar of sanskrit everything after spending 12 years of that one need to chant the vedas day in day out subah raat pranush karte 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 pura jeevan nikal jata hai so studying the vedas especially the upanishads and all the vedas are into tarka full of naya full of logic and reasoning and women generally have left brain side they are into emotional not into logic and reasoning so women are not designed for that logic and reasoning so why to put them under so much difficulty lord is so compassionate upon women that they he told them not to go to no need to go to gurukul and go through all that trouble of learning vedas upanishads etc etc so it's like that so from that point of view it is the women is said to be less intelligent not that they are less intelligent in the, from the point of academics what academics academics are nothing in comparison to all the upanishads and all So scoring uh, well, good, good uh, grades in the academics. What we will do? So I in that in that one one of the classes, Bakshi Sri class one, Mataji said, I mean like that. So um, girls are studying very nicely. And I said, if Mataji becomes a district magistrate, okay, very good, intelligent, talented, everything. Will she go back home back to Godhead at the end of her life? Even if she becomes Prime Minister of India, will she go back home back to Godhead? 
she may have so many talent so much material knowledge so much materially uh, well uh, equipped with the management of the entire india but will that uh, take her to my to guard it so see that point of view it's not only the material uh, uh, position fame name prestige etc see from the point of view of the spiritual upliftment that that matters then the next question came even among the spiritual circles also we see more mataji only mata is only taking more interest in it yeah, of course that is true prabhupada also writes many times prabhupada said that mata is very simple by nature by birth they have uh, that uh, mentality of dependence so obviously they accept the lord is their protector so there is no problem for mata ji just you provide the facilities they are into it they don't ask so many questions why this why that but the nature of man is to ask question why this why that they are logical minded they don't take up very easily so that is the problem with men that's why the men are supposed supposed to be sent to gurukul to study all these vedas upanishads and all then they will understand so because they have not gone through all that they question all these things show me god then only i'll accept otherwise they'll not accept so they start questioning like that so it's like that we have advantages and disadvantages everywhere it is not that that is we are wired differently it's better we accept it now then we can live with harmony yeah, that is the problem we can accept it but again the question comes why so much gender discrimination why not equal rights why not this why not that why women are called by prabhupada as less intelligent this that so many questions come out without understanding what is said why it is said under what circumstances under what context it is said so it's like that superficial uh, context they are saying that should be explained uh-huh. context is very important otherwise simply by taking little words we unnecessarily create so much havoc and maybe because it was actually very perfect it is very simple very straight word plain lifestyle if we follow that we don't have any issues because we don't follow that we have all the issues that is the problem the mother the lady will come and enter the kitchen though she may be having a cook everything but at least the serving part the mother will naturally do it though she is the top position in the office but when she comes home the serving part because that is the psychological nature of a woman that is their part. expression of love and affection for the family members then the conflict start that's why then she sometimes get tired also though she may be having a hundred of servants but still like so actually vedic culture was true that women need to do this work and men should earn that is perfect actually the husband need to provide all the facilities the mata ji will maintain but now the system is that women feel that no i have no less obviously <laughs> it's not education mila tha then uh, obviously it is it is become like that no? so, that's why in vedic culture though it may it may be very wrong to say in today's life today's uh, the way of living the women uh, the girls are married early so that they are not exposed to the outside world so much because early in their marriage they already have connection to the husband so they don't look here and there just like a student should have a connection to the spiritual master having seen through the entire world if you come to spiritual life we already have so much junk in our heart and spiritual master is giving something upon it in order to clean the junk only our own life goes in so when we actually follow the child is initially in the life very beginning of the life connected to spiritual master so only instruction spiritual master comes in so no junk came in so it life becomes smooth so it is like that even for mata ji also same thing so the vedic culture that the marriage used to happen early so that there is already bondage so no here no there so done so my life is for this family my life is to men uh, i am part of this family that's all come no looking here no looking there nowadays you see asking them get married itself is a dangerous thing even after reaching 30 years marriage what are you what are you talking you're being brainwashed but i tell you it's, it's not just it's about that you know what's happening is there's a part from male side also that they are exploiting see the male's duty is to protect the female what happens that literally exploiting the females in today's scenario why would they want to uh, marry that is that is the reason why britishers introduced girls education 
before Britishers introduced, there was no co-education in India. The Britishers, the whole and sole purpose is to bring the women out of their home so that they can be exploited freely. That is the whole point of it. If the woman comes out when they are exploited, as Arjuna says in the first chapter, Varna Sankara Jayate, the family culture will be destroyed. The India's backbone is family culture, traditional culture. If that is destroyed, gone, everything is gone. Because it is mother who protects the family culture. If the husband goes out to earn, the whole family is under the control of mother. If mother is not following all the Vedic culture, who will teach the children? The first guru for the any children is mother only, not the father. The mother herself is going to office, going to work, putting the children under the care of IR, nurse or the servant. What they will teach the child? What kind of samskar the child will learn? The child will study in the school something, he will come and say that, what is this mama, what are you doing all these rituals? And they ask, why are you doing this? Mother has no answer. The child says, all these are blind faith, why are you doing all these things? They become atheists. Simple. And if you do something, they say, why are you uh, after age old customs? All these things are not required. We are in the modern world. We are in the new age. We are in the VLSI age. Gone like this. Culture is gone. So, By I mean, saying culture is gone, it's not will help in any case. We have to do something about it. That's what, who will do what? These are charitable caregivers. Once that slowly they adopt, you know, slowly their change comes. What happens now when we try to invite these squatters now, children, our children are teased outside. You know, they are like, they are facing so many problems. Like, yes, yes. Sudden, uh, standard for our children. And then they, when they go out there, friends say, oh, your, your mom is this, your dad is like, okay. <laughs> The name itself is a troublesome thing. Yes. His name is Krishna. I'm like, he's just being, my God, please by anything. That, not that I named her after coming to Krishna Krishna consciousness. I named her when she was born. I was 21 years back. <laughs> that's what it is all about now. Yes, at least we have come here. No? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, we're so fortunate. Yeah. So fortunate. People think we are being brainwashed by his body. <laughs> Hare Krishna, any words of enlightenment from online devotees? No one is saying anything. All of you are following what we are trying to discuss here? Yeah, we are yeah. following. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, basically, I'm sorry to go or uh, derute. I mean, some current issues we are just trying to address, taking this reference. So, basically, your mother Sati is saying that so Lord Shiva kind of asking, what is the purpose of you? Are I going there without any invitation? <clears throat> so Vasati is saying that just as they are worshipped with their husbands, let me be worshipped with my husband. All my sisters are also welcomed very nicely after due worship by my family members. So let us also go through the same respect. This is my desire. I desire to accept along with you the gifts such as cloth and ornaments given my given by my parents. This is natural even today also we can witness whenever the daughter goes to her mother's place while returning, they get a lot of gifts from the parents. That is our traditional custom. Same thing Mother Parvati saying. This is Nurse Parvati, Sati. So next she continues. So Lord Shiva kind of uh, jokes with her. Do you desire gifts? Gifts ke liye ke gar? So for which Sati says, Tatrasvastur me nanubaratu sammita matru swastru klinna diyamcha mataram drakshe chirotkanta mana maharshi bheer punni yamanamcha murudadvaradvajam Yeah, someone read the translation online. Prabhuji, we are on, uh, sorry, we are on. Text number 10. Eight minutes, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my sisters, my sisters, my mother's sisters and their husbands 
and other affectionate relatives must be assembled there so if i go i shall be able to see them and i shall be able to see the flapping flags and the performance of the sacrifice by the great sages for these reasons my dear husband i am very much anxious to go so she says that chira utkanta mana for long time this is my desire i want to go to my father's home along with all my sisters so somehow right now with the opportunity oh shiva filled with longing for a long time i desire to see my sisters along with their husbands my aunts and my mother who has great affection for me in her heart and to see the best among all sacrifices performed by great sages like a flag among sacrifices so this is the desire of sati why she is telling this chira utkanta mana because the tension between the father in law and son in law went on for a long time as it is mentioned in the previous verse sati therefore had not gone to her father's house for a long while she has not visited her in her home her father's home for a long time thus she was very anxious to go to her father's house particularly because on the on the occasion the sisters and their husbands and her mother's sisters would be there it is natural for a woman she wanted to dress equally but to her other sisters and also be accompanied by her husband she did not of course want to go alone she did not say even till now she never said that i want to go alone she always said that just like my sisters are coming along with their husbands i want to go with my husband you please come so in that way do you desire to go there for the kids sati says that i desire to see my mother whose heart is filled with affection for me i desire to see the best among all sacrifices being conducted by all the brahmanas or i desire to see the flag raised by the sages for any sacrifice one of the important things dwaja rohana at the beginning the flag is raised at the end the flag is removed so it's like that then she continues I mean, of course, Lord says, Lord Shiva says that it is astonishing that there would be such illusion for uh, relatives in you. People with uh, bodily understanding, they may have such kind of affection, but I don't expect such kind of things from you, like the Lord Shiva is saying. So I don't expect you from uh, so much disturbed by this bodily relationship, something like that. Lord Shiva, being an husband, kind of uh, what you can say. posing a question to parvati satdevi so she she answers for that tvaye tadacharya majatma mayaya venirmitam bhati gunatrayatmakam tatapi aham yoshida tatva vichate dinad drikshe bhavame bhavakshitim yes prabhu please continue Uh, this manifested cosmos is a wonderful creation of the interaction of the three material modes or the external energy of the supreme lord this truth is fully known to you yet i am but a poor woman and i as you know i am not conversant with the truth therefore i wish to see my birthplace once more right yeah here she says the reason oh lord shiva aja oh unborn lord Prabhupada writes about this very nicely. Lord Brahma appeared from the lotus flower that appeared from the Garbhodaksha Vishnu's navel, and Lord Shiva appears from the brukuti of Lord Brahma. So either Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva, they don't have any visible parents; they just appeared from nowhere in their one sense. So they are called as Raja generally. So, O oh Lord Shiva, such attachment would be astonishing to see in you. So you, my dear Lord. you might not have such kind of bodily affection such kind of attachment based on the bodily distinction but i am not as elevated as you uh, but the whole universe along with me composed of the three gunas is made by the lord's maya moreover i am a woman and furthermore do not know the truth about you o oh, shiva being so unfortunate i desire to see my birthplace 
So you may say that I have bodily affection, etc., etc., but I am not as elevated as you. I am one among the many in the material universe who are in, influenced by three modes of material nature. So as a common person, I have affection for my family members. So please. So please will be said in the next verse. Next verse, she actually requests Lord Shiva more uh, earnestly. So, O oh Shiva, such bewilderment would be astonishing to see uh, to see in you, since you are self-satisfied. You are self-satisfied, but I am not. My satisfaction lies in my interaction with my sisters, mother, aunts, and father, uncle, etc., etc. But it is a natural quality for people like me, because. The whole universe is made up of the three gunas by the Lord's Maya. One becomes bewildered. Moreover, in this universe, I am also one among them. And moreover, I am a woman. So by nature, as a woman, I naturally have affection towards my mother, father, sisters, and other family members. So that is my current status. Oh, so, Prabhupada also kind of elaborates on the same theme. Moreover, I am ignorant of the truth. I do not know the truth about you. Somehow or other, by good fortune, I become your wife. But I don't know about your transcendental position. Therefore, being so unfortunate, I desire to see my birthplace, O oh Shiva. Please allow me to have this good fortune of associating with my family members. So like that, Ma Sati takes the low position requesting Lord Shiva. So can I ask a slightly off tension question mm. here? Like uh, you always say that Shiva is always Atmira ah, and he doesn't need anybody's company as such. But as a devotee, I'm, I'm talking about now socializing for that. From Sati's point of view, she wanted to uh, interact with sisters and things were there. But as a devotee also, he needs association. Right? Mm. He may not need the so-called materialistic people, although I'm a materialistic person myself, I don't say that. I don't call myself devotee. But to progress in devotion also, I need association of devotees at least. Is that called? Uh, we are in the half story only. The remaining half story will be revealed. Now Sati only speaking, na? Lord Shiva not yet responded. After hearing the response of Lord Shiva, you ask this question. That response will give you clarity. And later in the 24th chapter, you'll understand what is the mood of Lord Shiva. Not just Atma Rama. As you mentioned, na, Lord Shiva is eager to associate with devotees. When the 10 Prachetas were going to perform austerities to please Lord Vishnu, and his own Lord Shiva comes in front of Prachetas and teaches them Rudra Gita what they are supposed to chant and what form of the Lord they are supposed to meditate upon and what kind of master they are supposed to follow. That is Lord Shiva's eagerness to associate with devotees. He is not saying that one should not associate with devotees. Why he does not want Sati to go home? Lord Shiva gives wonderful arguments. So uh, all materialistic things happening. Ah, that is so simple. Shiva always being kind of alone Meditating on Lord's... Uh, mm. Okay. One uh, pra, ka, Lord Shiva's mood we can understand from the example of... Uh, what is his name? Uh, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. What kind of personality is he? What is his lifestyle? Yeah, so he was at least... Yeah. Completely isolated? Yeah. I mean, he used to keep distance from uh, people where he, he would be like the most... He would keep distance from the materialist people who are, who are after him asking from some material benedictions. Please bless me that my son will get a good wife. Please bless my son that he will get a good job. Please bless me that I will have a long life. Please bless me that we will get some wealth. He wanted to stay away from such kind of materialistic people. That's why he used to stay where people used to go. Sorry. Like that. But he would never miss any system program conducted by Bhakti Vinod Tagore. He would always attend, make sure that he will attend. What is that place? Odurum Dvir. So, Ananda Sukhajukun, we go there, na? There, Bhakti Tagur would always conduct programs. And Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj would always sit in one corner. He would never miss any program. He would always attend all sasang programs of Bhakti Tagur. See? 
what is his eagerness he is not expert scholar anything he would just come and sit being unnoticed by anybody and after the program he would quietly leave he would never expect any recognition or any such kind of things that is mentality he is eager to associate with devotees want to stay away from the little list people that is the mentality of lord shiva that's why he stays in crematorium That is okay, sir. So devotees came in. Not like that. In this chat, in this letter also we see that he, of course, apparently most of the time he might be like this, but many times he gives discourses to four Kumaras, Narada Muni. These are all his students. Yeah, even Jitendra Kumar also speaking to the same. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, that time also he was speaking. Yeah, yeah. Here in the chapter, in the sixth chapter, we'll see when Brahma goes with all of the other devotees. to the place where lord shiva is there he was speaking to four kumaras narada muni and kuvera they were all students is is sasang program so it's like that it is there we only hear that he being in a crematorium smearing with ashes etc etc that is only one side story of lord shiva it's not full story or generally he is in the form and he's married yeah association like once in a week Sunday fish program. <laughs> remaining seven days, remaining six point nine nine days, he will be in his meditation and other activities. So it's like that. So now Sati says that you gave mess to the whole world. Please be merciful to me also, my dear Lord. You are like uh, both Anath. Ashutosh, you become easily pleased with anyone who ever approaches you with some desire. I also have a small petty desire. Please bestow my bestow the fulfillment of my desire. Fulfill my desire. Like that, she is kind of at the end. She is like requesting earnestly, Mother uh, uh, Lord Shiva. Pasha prayatne rabava yoshito apal apalang krita kanta shaka. एरोप्लेन Have made the entire sky very beautiful. So, very nice, interesting uh, request by Mother Parvati. Sati, she says that, Oh Shiva, without any material conditioning, a bawa. Bawa means rebirth in the material world. We all take rebirth because of our past karma, because of our bondage. So Lord Shiva is called a bawa, who has no material conditioning. Basically, who has no rebirth in this material world. simple see also the ornamented women going in groups with their husbands o oh, shiva with a blue throated one siti kanta of course the drinking of the poison from samudra mantra past time happens much later that happens in the chakshu mantra pranti swayam mantra is going on but since lord shiva is the eternal personality the past times keep happening eternally that knowledge is always available so sati is addressing as blue throated one The sky is decorated with their flying airplanes. All the devotees are glowing with, along with their husbands in their respective airplanes, which appear to be like white swans. Every airplane looking like a white swan, which is flying in the air. They are all pushyaka manas, not the petrol manas. So they are all going like the swans. And Sati is saying that see, everyone is so joyful. They are going to the Agnya, except both of us who are under remorse. <coughs> Do we need this? Something like that. She is uh, <coughs> asking me, Lord Shiva. I am not the only one in this condition. You do not experience the suffering of uh, separation from our loved ones. Don't think that I am only feeling separation. I think you are also having separation from the loved ones. Other women. <coughs> not only our relatives but others the general devatas also along with their husbands are going together 
the sky is decorated with their airplanes oh blue throated you drank poison to give mercy to others <coughs> therefore please permit this even though the other devatas who do not have any relationship with our family still they are going along with their husbands but we have close relationship with our family why are we not going simple na huh? very logical they are going though they don't have any relationship with the family so they are going happily and we are not going what is this i am daughter you are son in law we are supposed to go kindly understand so like that she is uh, requesting and she basically indicated to ashwa that see how many hundreds of people are going the so many airplanes so many airplanes like that the swans are going so we are only not going rest all the universe is going we are only left alone so for the welfare of the entire universe to drank poison can't you do this small thing for me so something so then lord shiva said that since you have not invited how can we go we were not invited they were all invited that's why they are going whether they are relatives or not relatives doesn't matter invitation hai ja sakte invitation nahi how can we go then sati says final thing even without invitation one can go to four people's home so those four people are mentioned in this verse katam sutaya pitrgeh kautukam nishamya deha suravarya ningate anahuta api abiyanti suhrudam bhartur gurur deha krutas chaketana best of the devi gods how can the body of a daughter remain undisturbed when she hears that some festive event is taking place in her father's house even though you may be considering that i have not been invited there is no harm if one goes to the house of one's friend husband spiritual master or father without invitation mm. oh best of the devata suravarya pralad maras tells hirane kashipu oh asuravarya Oh, best among the asuras. Yeah, our mother Sati is saying that she was the best of the devatas, Suravarya. Hearing of a festival in her father's house, how can the body of the daughter not be stirred to see it? How can a daughter, understanding that her father is going to perform a wonderful festival, how can she does not attend to it? Then Lord Shiva said that. Even though you may be a daughter, but without invitation, you should not go. Then she says that, though uninvited, people go to the houses of a friend, Suhrudam, husband, Bharathur, father-in-law, Guru, father-in-law, spiritual master, Guru, or father, Deha Krtascha, the one who has given one's body. even without any invitation one can go to these four people a friend a husband father in law and father their house can be visited without invitation nahi father in law father wife joint family no father in law and husband are family friend husband of course guru or father in law as well as guru also spiritual master in that sense so see you don't don't take only women take the men also for women husband applicable for man so in law house whenever he can go he don't have to inform in advance kabhi bhi ja sakte so kuch koi na bolte ke so in that sense not only for women this principle is applicable for anyone both male and female so friend ke ghar pe kabhi bhi ja sakte the wife can go to husband's after marriage that becomes her home only so she no need anyone's permission father in law for the son in law daughter in law for daughter in law anyway it is her home after marriage she can go anytime no one can stop and for son in law father in law is the most respected one in the family who will not say no who will say no to him 
एंड फादर फॉर गर्ल को फादर का सन इफ इज वर्किंग समवेयर एल्स ही कैन एनी टाइम कम होम नो फादर सेज नो नो सो इन दैट सेंस इट इज वेरी प्लेन दीज फोर प्लेसेस वन कैन गो इवन विदाउट एनी इनविटेशन दे बिकम्स हैप्पी सीइंग अस सो विद दैट इंटेंशन पार्वती सति इज सेइंग दिस सिंस आई एम हिज डॉटर how can i remain peaceful how can the body of the daughter not be stirred to see the festival of her father's house but you have not been invited how can you go though uninvited people go to the house of a friend husband father in law and father this is shastrik injunction we can go it's not just saying no no scripture scripture man simple na friend means which friend says no to one so, sudama never told krishna that i am coming he suddenly came he came to the main entrance of the rukmini's palace lord krishna got up and received sudama so, it's obviously it's like no friend in informs in advance even our vedic culture is that atith devo bhava when even when an invited guest comes he should be treated as the supreme lord so that is for a general person they not speak of the very close relative so son is the close relative for the father so daughter like can go to her in-laws home it is the unka ghar hai wo kaun na karenge na bolenge so these are like very very close friends close people son can go to father so my father in-law so many time he son will never be stopped so these are like no invitation required if you give invitation that is actually bad on other side so it's like that Of course, current scenario, everything is different. The, but at least in the Vedic context. So, now, final, still Lord Shiva is not moved. Sati is giving the final blow. The last words spoken by Sati, final blow. Still, you cannot go as an invited guest. Lord Shiva says, even though you can go to the home of friend, husband, father, and father-in-law. But still, now the circumstances is not that. Why Lord Shiva will tell later on? But he said, "Still, you cannot go." He read any data, but he said, "Still, you cannot go." Then uh, Sati becomes very restless, and she says that. Tan me prasiddhe, tan me prasiddhe, da mamarte vanchitam, kartum bhavan karuni ko va tah tarhati. क्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षुषाक्षु
She was also there personally. Obviously, na? how can husband alone there? That's what she says. Na? Last time both of them went together. She will be there, obviously. Why not? Now she's she is requesting so much. Uh, will she not go? And it is said that uh, many times na, I, I I have gone to my parents from long back. That means she went that time, that time. Because of the friction between father and uh, son-in-law, in between she did not go. Now anyway, a good occasion is coming. So even though she was not invited, she can go on the name of occasion. Normally may not go because there is no invitation, but no occasion is there, so we can go. Like that she is pushing her husband. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Final blow is that since you have accepted me as half of your for a no for no one whoever comes to you fulfill their desires i am half of you can't you fulfill my simple desire that's the final blow initially she said if you desire so if you desire to go and now she is telling that you have to oblige because you accepted me as half of you you need to do it huh? if you do not want to go so you now she says that even though you do not want to go uninvited because of my request, please come. You are a devata, you are a deva and can do what is normally done. Sorry, you are a deva, you are the devata of all the devatas. Okay, and you can do what is not normally done. The other devatas, whether respected in humiliated, they will go. Because that is what they want to be part of the big, big festivals. In which they will go. But you are a great devata. You are a great personality. You may be beyond all these uh, material, uh, society, affection, etc., etc., business. You can do something which cannot be done by others like me. Because I cannot stand here without attending my father's sacrifice. You may not go. But fine, still, though you are full of knowledge and are completely self-satisfied, you don't need attending uh, that sacrifice to get more happiness. Since you have accepted me as half of your body, you need to fulfill the demand of your half body. Shiva is famous as having half of his body in the form of a woman, Ardhanarishwara. Since you have done that, be merciful to me also. You are fulfilling the desires of everyone. So, unko sabko unka icha pura kar rahe. Aapka garwala hai. Aapka sharir mein aaga aada baagi dari. So, mera chota icha ko pura karne ke itna soch rahe aap. So, it's like that. This is the final book from uh, Mother Sati. These are list of arguments. It was to think that is your father-in-law's sacrifice. All the devatas are going. My sisters and their husbands will be there. Therefore, we will go. I desire to meet my relatives. We can receive gifts presented by my parents. I am longing to meet my sisters, aunts and mothers. I met them long back. Since the last sacrifice, I never gone there. Want to see glorious sacrifice. So then she said that, don't expect from me so much renunciation as you have because I'm a normal conditioned soul and more than I'm a woman. I'm not a man like you who is logically oriented. I'm a woman, I'm emotionally oriented. I don't know you completely. You are Atma Rama, self-satisfied. You are the transfer platform. I don't know about it. See others women going with their husbands. I have only one desire. I also want to go along with my husband. I want to be one among my sisters and their family members. You protected the entire universe by drinking poison. Can't you do this small thing for me? See the entire sky filled with all the visitors. All the ladies are well decorated along and they are traveling along with their husbands. One can go to the relative's house without invitation. It is natural for a daughter. How can she stay undisturbed when something big special is happening in her father's home? So you are merciful to everyone. Therefore, be merciful to me also. These are the various arguments that uh, Sati gives to Lord Shiva. So now the next two verse onwards, Lord Shiva will respond to the arguments of Sati. 
so one verse maitre is saying lord shiva smiled to please sati so before giving reply thoda slightly smiled at sati having heard all the various arguments why she should go why lord shiva should take take her to the kinla song evam giritra priya bibhashata pratyabhyadatta prasansu hrutpriya samsmarito marma bida kuvagishun yana ko vishwasrjam samakshata ಸತಿಮ್ Lord Shiva replied with a smile Prahasan pratya prati abhi datta with a slight smile he began to reply while remember while reminding his wife of the heart piercing arrows of insults marma bida ku vag ishun ishu means arrows vag ishu means the words which are like the piercing arrows ku vag ishu means very bad words which were spoken by daksha where in the presence of the creators of the universe in the presence of all the main leaders of the entire universe all the prajapatis so remember reminding of those insults of daksha to sati lord shiva is kind of uh, reprimanding sati not to go to the sacrifice so in the purport this purport is very proper goes into one important aspect how could in the previous verse it is said that lord shiva is atma rama then how could he get affected by daksha's words the piercing words of insults etc so an interesting slight principle is mentioned in this so lord shiva made his wife remember the arrows of sharp words which pierce the heart how can the sharp words of daksha pierce the heart of lord shiva who is supposed to be self satisfied it is long time that a sacrifice happened long back how could shiva remember even till today about those harsh words since shiva is the supreme lord he is certainly self satisfied but because he is also related to tamoguna sometimes lamentation illusion attachment and hatred manifest in him with his supreme powers not visible <clears throat> normally shiva is atma rama completely peaceful he becomes easily pleased fulfills everyone desires and always meditating upon the supreme lord everything is fine but once in a while he also becomes he exhibits the qualities of tamoguna such as lamentation illusion attachment and hatred etc etc why because he is related to tamoguna lord shiva's duty is the destruction of the universe destruction is the function of tamaguna creation is the function of prajaguna maintenance is the function of satsaguna destruction is the function of tamaguna so somehow or other as a service <coughs> lord shiva is directly connected to tamaguna and as a result of which he sometimes exhibits lamentation illusion attachment and hatred etc the reason will be elaborately explained in the future in the future part of the purport <coughs> sometimes lord krishna though lord krishna is always satisfied because of having prema he also shows sometimes lamentation illusion attachment and hatred in relation to mother yashoda where he showed all these things in relation to mother yashoda tamodar lila and also sometimes in relation to balram ji and also with the gopis because of invisibility of his supreme powers whether it is lord vishnu or lord krishna or lord shiva there are full of powers there are the yogishwaras 
a lot of all the yogic mystic powers. But uh, Tachkarna people, how can they have these low qualities? Seems to be very uh, ordinary. It is that generally they are all full of powerful, but sometimes they act as if they don't have any powers. Sometimes they act as if they are very, very ordinary. So when it comes to the case of Shiva, he acts as an ordinary person exhibiting all this anger, uh, illusion, lamentation, attachment, etc. Because he is service in, in connection with Tamaguna. And when it comes to Lord Krishna, he is uh, kind of behaving like this in relation to Mother Yashoda or Balramji or Gopis. We will understand what is the reason. That is because of love. He does all these things. In Lord Shiva, those moods arise from Tamaguna and are filled with an experience of a shadow of grief. Though Lord Shiva exhibits all these <coughs> behaviors, but he actually does not go through grief. It is only a shadow of grief. Lord Shiva simply acting as a one of the material living entity in the material world, as one among the living entities in the material world. Uh, though actually he is Sachidananda Swarupa, but since he is there in the material world, in acting, in interacting with the material modes, he behaves like normal people sometimes not always but occasionally for example Rukasura, he performed severe austerities hmm? and uh, he requested Lord Shiva to give a blessing of course he was actually cutting his heads he had uh, he even not head he was cutting off his flesh and offering into the fire at the end when he was going to cut off his thro throat Lord Shiva appeared he was forced to give benediction then he said that on whomsoever head I put my hand, let it burn. Lord Shiva says, okay. Then he says that I don't have faith in your words. I want to test whether this works or not. I want to put my hands on your head. So Lord Shiva himself is running here and there out of fear of Vrakasura. So who is Lord Shiva? Who is this Vrakasura? Why is he supposed to flee here and there? Apparently it seems that Lord Shiva gave a blessing that he himself becomes afraid of that blessing. The blessing is more powerful than Shiva. That is only in order to show the greatness of Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva acted like that. Though Lord Shiva is so powerful, he could have tackled with Rakasura very easily. But as a matter of pastime, he enacted like that. So something like that we can see. He said Basmasura. Yeah, he is only called Basmasura. Same thing, one name I used to know. His original name is Rukasura. Eventually, after this benediction, he became Basmasura. Jobi Jiske Sarke Upar Atrakingi Wo Basma Jai. That is his wizard. What's the name of his name? But demon is not his name. Asur. Even for the Prabhupada's past seconds, where he said that Shiva could have. Shiva would not have felt disturbed by the Prabhupada's behavior, but because he wanted to glorify Krishna mm. and establish Krishna to be the supreme leader, yes. Shiva is not there. Yeah. So that is how we have to understand. <clears throat> but for now, since Lord Shiva is closely connected with ignorance, Tamaguna, so he exhibits such kind of behavior sometimes, apparently. But when it comes to Lord Krishna, in Lord Krishna, those moods arise from Prema and are filled with an experience of the highest bliss. <clears throat> Example is given. Since Prema is the ultimate essence of the Chit Shakti, these moods cannot be restricted by the Lord's being self-satisfied. When it comes to Lord Shiva, though he is all-powerful, all the powers are thrown away. Out of loving, affectionate dealings with his devotees, he exhibits all these uh, lamentation, illusion, attachment and hatred that actually will enhance their Prema will enhance their love and loving affection towards each other. However, destruction of demons is the effect of Sattva Guna alone. Lord Krishna also feels the demon. Lord Krishna also exhibits anger toward the demons. That anger with respect to the demons is a function of mode of goodness. Huh? Wait, wait, we'll discuss. But the anger which Lord Krishna expressed towards Mother Ishoda, you would stop giving me milk, I'll break the pot. Like that, Lord Krishna became very angry and uh, biting his lips. He actually broke the pot of yogurt. That is also anger. 
but that anger is out of love that actually enhances the love between mother issues and lord krishna but here this anger between krishna and kamsa krishna and shishupal that anger is due to mode of goodness lord krishna who expands as lord vishnu whose responsibility is mode of uh, that maintenance it is which mode goodness only na why goodness we will understand now because of the mutual friction of the gunas sattva guna destroys tamas and rajas just as light destroys darkness in this way lord krishna destroys demons when lord krishna kills the demons the demons get liberation that means the demons who are filled with ignorance and rajas and tamas everything will be destroyed and uh, when they are there they will be completely purified they will get sahaja mukti mm-hmm. that is the function of goodness if somebody is killed if somebody expressing anger in the mode of ignorance that actually becomes a sin but when lord vishnu exp- exhibits the anger in the mode of goodness that will be the cause of liberation just like sattva guna destroys raja guna and tama guna the anger of lord vishnu in sattva guna destroys the raja guna and tama guna of the demons and delivers them so it is like that but lord shiva also destroys at the end of the day of brahma so everyone will be liberated <laughs> no they will enter into the body of garbhadasa and again they take birth the destruction is a function of the anger is a function of ignorance and this anger is a function of goodness understand the difference the anger the trait itself uh, is of tamam guna how can we say anger goodness <laughs> No, okay. not like that. Is Lord Krishna pure goodness? Me anger, na Lord Krishna is anger is in pure goodness. Good anger. Of course it is. Of course it is. I'm not saying I'm not arguing about that. But I'm saying the anger quality itself. I should not say quality. The trait itself is a no, no. Tamo guna thing. Who is exhibiting the anger? That is also important. The person, in the mode of ignorance, exhibits anger for destructing, for the destruction of others, and also for one's own destruction. For the for for a person, for example. mother also becomes angry with the children father also becomes angry with children is is it a result of ignorance or goodness if the father or parents are becoming angry for the well-being of the children or for the destruction of the children for the well-being i'm saying at that moment whichever moment the, the purpose the person also has the role to play ha pale la pali పలేనా పరిచయతని రిజల్ట్ ఓకే రిజల్ట్ తో హే బట్ పర్పస్ సో లార్డ్ విష్ణు బికమ్స్ యాంగ్రీ విత్ ద డిమన్స్ బట్ ద రిజల్ట్ ఇస్ దట్ డిమన్స్ ఆర్ డెలివర్డ్ దే గాన్ టు మోక్ష దే అటెండ్ మోక్ష లార్డ్ శివ బికమ్స్ యాంగ్రీ దే విల్ డై అండ్ దే విల్ టేక్ బర్త్ అగైన్ దే విల్ నాట్ బి లిబరేటెడ్ సో ఫ్రమ్ దట్ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ వ్యూ వెర్స్ Uh, that is also that is that is that is pure goodness that anger is uh, the loving reciprocation between uh, bishma the supreme lord and his devotee that is like uh, since he is shuddha sattva though the effect of material sattva are also present in him in the sense that uh, they are handled by him they do not affect him see they are handled by him only but they do not affect him not for shiva this is for lord vishnu shuddha sattva na since he is shuddha sattva it is all about lord krishna lord vishnu though the effect of material sattva also present in him but they do not affect him but when it comes to lord shiva he gets affected something like that that connection is there with lord shiva so this has been explained in the first canto shrimad bhagavatam 1 to 23 for more details you can read the purport for 1 to 23 and will be explained again in the 7th canto 7937 verse 1223 mm. where lord vishnu lord shiva lord brahma three of them are discussed among the three worship of lord vishnu will give one beneficial results three of them are devatas but vishnu worship will yield <coughs> most beneficial results so in that sense Then by, uh, <coughs> hmm. So, 
it's already time 829 we will discuss what lord shiva said in the next week so any questions before closing for today okay all of you are able to follow yes okay no questions here so we'll stop here for today and we'll continue next week uh, next saturday same time harikshna jarantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai anantakoti vaishnava